Good morning. Welcome to Facebook Live. I'm Alexandra Weisgerber, Family Services Manager here in the Sacramento office. I'm Stephanie Cardenas, the Walk Manager for the Sacramento Walk to End Alzheimer's. And we're here today to talk to you a little bit about our programs and our Walk to End Alzheimer's. Um, Stephanie, tell me what's going on with the walk. Well, you know, our walk is quickly approaching. We're just five weeks away, Saturday, September 28th at Rayleigh Field. We have a goal of raising $535,000. So we're pretty excited about that. We're about 35% of the way right now. Awesome. Yeah. Good. Um, and oh, go ahead. Yeah. That. Tell us about some of the other walks that are happening so, around our region. We have about seven different walks in September, and I have to reference my paper because there are so many, ranging from September 7th all the way to wrapping up our weekend with the Fresno Walk as well on September 28th. So we're pretty excited about how many walks we have coming up. But I really want to know about some programs we have going on out of the Sacramento office. Absolutely. You know, we know that the walk is what funds our programs here, chapter-wide. Um, so some of the things that we offer are just some basic education, maybe the 10 warning signs. Perhaps you're seeing something in your loved one or even maybe yourself, and you want to learn a little bit more about that, um, how to get that early detection. So we have a 10 warning signs of Alzheimer's that we're offering here in the greater Sacramento region. Um, we also offer um, legal and financial uh, planning that we're going to be doing in Stockton. Um, and then we know for our caregivers that oftentimes they're looking for strategies and suggestions on how do we effectively communicate with someone throughout the course of this disease, or how do we manage difficult behaviors such as wandering or aggression. Um, so we also offer a variety of workshops throughout the community um, on behaviors as well, and we have one coming up in uh, Modesto um, in November. So if you'd like to learn more about that, you can visit our website at alz.org, or you can go call our helpline at 1-800-272-3900. There's always someone there to support you and get you connected to the right programs uh, for your situation. Um, so one of my favorite things about the walk is the flower ceremony. Um, we offer a lot of early stage programs here in our chapter and nationwide. Um, and we get the privilege of typically hearing from one of our early stage constituents um, about their story and their journey, and, and I just love hearing them talk about that, but having them hold that blue flower is just, it's so meaningful for me and so inspiring. Can you talk a little bit about the flower ceremony and what each flower represents? I definitely will. The flower ceremony is my favorite piece too. I don't think that there was a dry eye in Rayleigh Field last year, and I don't think there will be one this year. Um, if you haven't participated in our walk before, we're very unique in the fact that we hold flowers representing how we're connected to this disease. And as Alexandra mentioned, if you are someone living with a diagnosis, you would carry a blue flower throughout the walk and hold it up proudly um, during our flower ceremony. I'll hand that over to you, Alexandra. Right. Yep. And then we have yellow. And our yellow flowers stand for caregivers. And one of the most moving and impactful moments I had at walk last year was watching uh, a gentleman hold up the blue flower and his wife next holding up the yellow and then putting her, her arm around him and it was just one of the most impactful things I've ever experienced. It shows then, that true partnership. It does. It, it, it really does. It was yeah. just, um, well that's when my tears started flowing. <laughs> um, and then we have our orange flower and that's if you're a supporter of the cause. Maybe you don't have a personal connection, maybe you are just out supporting your community and you've chosen this disease to fight and we appreciate you joining our fight and then purple and this is for all those that have lost a loved one someone they care about a friend a family member to this disease and you will see unfortunately a lot of purple out walk and that's why it's so important for us to all be there so we we don't see purple anymore and we start to hold up our famous white flower which represents our first survivor so it's pretty amazing uh, what we do and see at the flower ceremony. And I'd like to know a little bit, though, about some of the communities that are impacted by this disease that we may not see at walk um, sure. that may have a little bit of a harder time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just kind of going back to the oh, flower sorry. ceremony, um, we, I work with the Hispanic community, and um, one of the caregivers that um, I was working with two years ago was holding the caregiver flower, so the yellow one. And then at last year's walk, she transitioned to that purple flower. And it was a difficult time for her. She came up and she found me and she said, I transitioned the flower, but I'm here walking in honor of my Jose, which was her husband. Um, so speaking of, we offer, we know that um, certain communities are impacted disproportionately um, by Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. 
And so we make sure that we serve all of our community members. Um, we have Spanish resources. Um, tenemos una línea de ayuda. So we have our helpline that you can call, uh, grupos de apoyo, so support groups, educación, education, recursos, resources. Um, we are hosting our first annual, um, all, or excuse me, African American uh, caregiver uh, community assessment forum. So we really want to hear from the community to hear what is it that they need from us so that we can help support them. We offer um, a variety of education and support groups for all of our diverse communities. So again, if you're just joining us now on Facebook Live, um, call our helpline 1-800-272-3900, visit our website at alz.org, and you can get connected to any of our services. Um, so, Stephanie, I'd like to kind of turn it back over to you, um, and we'll talk a little bit about what programs needs, but when you think about WALK all across our chapter, what is it that we need most? We know that we've got our families and our community supporting us, but what else do we need to make our WALK successful? Sure. Well, we need people to register, <laughs> and registering is super easy to do if you go to act.alz.org. You can search for your WALK pretty easy by putting in your zip code, um, but in Sacramento, We'd love to have you on board. You can register anytime between today and walk day. Um, and in addition to people coming out and walking, we really need volunteers. Our walks across the chapter are not you know, successful unless we have volunteers such as yourself. In Sacramento, we need 350 volunteers to put on a successful walk. And the uh, volunteer jobs or duties kind of range all the way from registration, greeters, route monitors, um, our promise flower, garden, or t-shirt pickup, etc. We have something for anyone and everyone in all ages. Um, we you know, ask that if kids come under 18, that an adult is with them, a parent or a guardian, but we love having those key clubs from high schools. Mm -hmm. So we, yeah. we definitely love the volunteers and love the walkers. But I know walk isn't the only thing that needs volunteers. I know that programs need them all year long, That's right. um, not just on day of. So uh, you want to share a little bit more about how our volunteers can get involved with programs? Absolutely. So we know that volunteers are instrumental in all of the work that we do here at the Alzheimer's Association. Um, I had the opportunity of going to the Eureka Walk last year. Uh -huh. And the amount of volunteers that showed up for that was just phenomenal. In a small town right on the coast, um, I felt like there were almost more volunteers than walkers. I mean, it's, it's so instrumental in the work that we do, and the foundation of, of our organization is based upon volunteers. Um, so the Alzheimer's Association, as we heard, we're always looking for walk volunteers, office volunteers, um, but programs has a unique opportunity for community educators. So if you're looking to volunteer, um, maybe you want to do the 10 warning signs presentation, you'd like to enhance your speaking skills, um, or connect with community. Maybe you're a retired social worker and you really want to help others with their communication strategies. We have wonderful opportunities for you to get involved as a community educator. Um, perhaps you like going out and connecting with the community more kind of at health fairs. So we have that for community representatives. Um, we have helpline volunteers where you can come in and, and have that one-on-one -on -one contact with the caregivers or people who are living with the diagnosis. Um, so there's just an array of opportunities to get involved as volunteers. And, and we know that it feels good to help others. Um, whether you have a direct connection to the cause or you just want to carry out our vision of a world without Alzheimer's, we want you and we want you part of our team. And again, if it's just the, the day of walk, helping schlep chairs and tables, or if it's a year round thing where you're a community educator and, and helping out in the office, um, you can visit our website at alz.org or call our helpline at 1-800-272-3900 and we can get you connected to volunteer opportunities. Um, is there anything else that you want to share about our fabulous walks? Or? Sure, sure, I do. I want to ask one more time that everyone, as soon as this video ends, stop and go to act.alz.org act and find a walk near you and register. Walk today, join us in this fight against Alzheimer's because together we can end alls and we need your help with that. Uh, absolutely. Um, what I didn't mention that I like to, um, a very instrumental part of our programs is our support groups. We know that it's so important for caregivers to get connected with others um, who are going through something similar, just to hear what strategies that, that they can utilize to help with their caregiving situation, what resources are available to them. Um, so we have a list of caregiver support groups nationwide um, that of course you can get connected to. But if you wanna volunteer as a support group facilitator, we offer a variety of support group trainings um, in person, over the phone. We actually have one coming up in the Sacramento region on September 4th. So again, if you would like to become a, a support group facilitator, get connected with us. 
Um, hopefully you have learned about the wonderful programs and services and work that we do at the Alzheimer's Association. Again, I'm Alexandra Weisgerber, Family Services Manager. I'm Stephanie Cardenas, the Walk Manager for the Sacramento Walk to End Alzheimer's. And we'll see you soon on Facebook Live. At Walk! <laughs>